All right, we want to welcome you, <coughs> excuse me, all here tonight, and um, this is the last of our little filling study, and then from next week we're going uh, on to the study of Jonah. The pastor will be preaching on Sunday morning, he starts preaching on Jonah, and we follow the Wednesday after the sermon, talking about what he preached on, the section he preached on. So it's going to be interesting, and uh, he's... He's quite excited about starting the series on Jonah, so mm -hmm. I encourage you to support this, the sermon services and then also the Bible studies. Um, as we open in prayer, I just want to uh, think of Tim. It's not like Tim to miss a, a, a study, and so I think we just pray for them. Let's just open our hearts to God and to the Holy Spirit tonight. Lord, we thank you for your presence with us, and we thank you that that you lead and guide and protect. And Lord, we thank you for the miracles sitting at this table tonight. We think of Robin, we think of Jackie, Lord, we think of Camilla. We just it's it's so great to see your hand at work. We want to pray for Tim tonight, Lord. We're not sure why he's not here, but we just pray that you will be with him and protect him. And Heal if he needs healing at this time. Be with the pastor as he uh, settles back in at the church and as we start this new series on Sunday. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Alright, so last week we looked at Hannah. How she prayed and asked God to give her a child. And... Um, it was a silent prayer um, in that she uh, she was praying without words, just her lips were moving, so much so that the priest died. The priest came up to her, thought she was drunk. Mm -hmm. You know, she was talking to herself. So, But she was praying for a son, and she said, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know the story about it. And the son was born, it was Samuel, and he was given back to her. Mm -hmm. Very interesting from last week was it said that she loaned him to the Lord. Didn't mm -hmm. give or to the, you know, to the church, but she, she, she loaned him, but he was theirs, but it's still hers. Mm -hmm. and, and that was exciting to me. And I thought, I was thinking about that as I was driving this week, and I was thinking of, of Moses and his mom, um, when he put him in that in that little basket to go down the river, and then when the the he said his daughter must keep an eye on the basket to see you know what's happening, and then when the princess found Moses, she said uh, the little daughter said, "Do you need somebody to help you look after him?" When she took him and was able to bring the mother back to him again, it was also alone, and the mother was part of his life. And you think of Jesus and Mary, you know, how Mary um, brought up Jesus mm -hmm. and uh, was part of his life until the age of 30 before he went into the ministry. Mm -hmm. So, a mother's job is so important with the children. Mm -hmm. And the mother's prayer is probably the most powerful prayer that you can pray today. <laughs> so, never give up. She gave me back to the Lord. Yes. And I, I'm here because of a mother's prayer. When I was away from God and not three minutes, my mom just didn't give up on me. So we're going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 3 tonight. I'm going to read the first few verses. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Isn't that sad, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Mm -hmm. There was no widespread revelation, and it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of, the go of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered and said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. 
And he said, I did not call you, lie down again. And he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not One call second. my son, lie down again. Now One Samuel second. did not know that the Lord no yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Mm -hmm. Same thing that it means God wasn't even talking to Eli at that time. Mm -hmm. He was the spiritual leader of the nation. Mm -hmm. And um, but it says the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Mm -hmm. And but it also says that some will hear and some won't. Some won't, you're right. Mm -hmm. Um God calls us to do things and we might think that, that um, God could not do it without us. <coughs> but if we fail on, 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 our, on our calling and, and, and our obedience to Him, He will call somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, it said, uh, uh, there was a song by one of the uh, gospel singers and said, um, if God uses you to do something, don't get all proud of yourself and all that. He says he, he could use the dog next door if he wants. <laughs> and it's true. Um, so, but God, when God calls us, we need to obey. If we don't obey, we're hurting ourselves and the people we minister, you know, that are around us. Mm -hmm. And he might have to call somebody else like he did in mm -hmm. calling Samuel now mm -hmm. and getting Samuel there. Mm -hmm. See, so when his mom prayed for Samuel, it was part of God's plan. Mm -hmm. It was already part of God's plan to fill the gap there in Eli's house. Mm -hmm. Okay, amid the hustle and the bustle of the daily life, we often find it hard to hear God's voice. Many voices shout for our attention. Deadlines to meet, bills to pay, meetings to attend, phone calls to make, children to care for. We try to read our Bible but struggle to be still and to receive a word from God. Mm -hmm. When I was a youth leader, I, with my teens, I was trying to get this, this story through to them one night and talking about the word of God and how do you hear God's word and what about all these other things you're hearing, you know, you need to listen to the right thing. And we had the room in pitch darkness and, and I had... a tape record again and I had different voices coming and saying this and this in the darkness and then I had the voice of Jesus coming through you know with saying scripture and there was and, and suddenly the light came on you know with with the voice and I, I, I don't know what effect it had on the teens I pray that they remember that even today as they are grandparents themselves now but um but that Jesus is light and his voice is the one we must listen to mm -hmm. Yeah, don't do what I did. See the light on and go, Oh, Mom forgot to turn the light off. <laughs> go right into the kitchen and go shut the light off and curse the Lord. <laughs> like, oh man, I screwed up. <laughs> In what ways does God speak to us today? Through His Word. Through His Word. Through his Mostly through His Word. Mm -hmm. Is that oh, okay. Mostly through His Word, yes. Mm -hmm. um, there are people that have a voice that they hear. Uh, can I get it for you? Sorry. Most people, some people still hear the word of God or get it in dreams. Yep. Or maybe some of God speaks to you through somebody else. Mm -hmm. But mainly, and I would say about 90% of the time, 95% of the time, it's His word that He talks to us through. When is it hard for you to hear God? When you're not listening. <laughs> when you're not listening? No. When you don't like what He's telling you. You're rejecting what you're hearing, so you... Yeah. Because you've already made up your mind in what direction you go, and you don't want to hear the other one. Mm -hmm. In the days of Samuel, few people were listening to God's voice. 
politically and spiritually, Israel was in a terrible shape, mm -hmm. as they had no king, uh -huh. and everyone did as he saw fit. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound like today? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. In this study, we observe Samuel as a young man hearing the word of the Lord for the first time and beginning his prophetic ministry. Mm -hmm. So, why do you think Samuel had difficulty distinguishing God's voice from Eli's? Uh, you, you had uh, read earlier that the word of the Lord was not revealed. He was young. He was uh, just experiencing God. God called yeah. him. He didn't know that it was God calling him. He, he got Eli, he called me. And yes. he got, so, I, I believe he was coming into the knowledge of the truth, the revealed word came alive. The, the Bible said the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed. So. Yes. yes. Now let's run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that he had been given to God, Samuel, and put into Eli's care as a gift to God? Maybe Eli was not doing the job he should have been doing in preparing him to hear God's word. We don't know. I'm just... Mm -hmm. It's a possibility. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to blame Eli for everything. But his own two sons were were rotten. Mm -hmm. And and were, were really there were problems and they were mm -hmm. they were taking bribes, they were taking all kinds of things and again it sounds up today. Mm -hmm. I thought that was still happening. Yeah. You know it's interesting because it said um, mm -hmm. to verse three and interesting is the verse three said the lamp, of God, the lamp of God had not yet gone out. Mm -hmm. And if you could take it um, figuratively, that God was still there. Mm -hmm. He hadn't disappeared. Yep. Although they didn't know his word or didn't know him. Although they had given up on him, yeah. he hadn't given up on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what Samuel came along. Yes. Mm -hmm. And out of the prophets, Samuel's probably the one we know the most and, and was the, the, had the most incredible life, you know, everything that was fulfilled during his life. Mm -hmm. What do you think Samuel thought and felt as he listened to Eli and returned to his bed? I mean, he heard that voice, there was no doubt about it, and then Eli said, it wasn't me. Um, you said, what, what, what did, what do you think he, uh, Samuel felt as he listened to Eli, and, re and then when Eli said, no, I didn't call you, you need to go back to bed, and then return to his bed. Or, is this part of the final thing where Samuel said to him, where Samuel finally, uh, Eli finally realized that it's God calling him, mm -hmm. yeah. and he said to him, say to him, uh, speak for your servant is hearing. Mm -hmm. That was also, that was a bit scary for a young child. Yeah. Um, I think he was he was coming into uh, the knowledge of the truth that uh, that God was speaking to him, and I believe he, it was predestined with that. Yes. And he, you know, and I believe if, if it was us and we and God speaks, we would be kind of like, Joy, did you call me? You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just making an example, but I believe that that would happen to one of us. And God actually spoke. It would kind of shake us a little bit. Like, you who called me, you know, no. audible. It must have been an audible voice that he heard. So he was coming into the knowledge of hearing God. Yep. Yes. That's, I'm going to stop it there. Okay. It was two days earlier. I'm in the car. And I just put my husband in hospice. And uh, on the way home, a voice, it's, it's not, I just heard the voice that says, it's time to leave. And then two days later, Colonel's out sitting on the patio having a cigarette, just kicking it back there. And he hears, it's time to leave. And he's looking around to see who said it. Yeah. So as you says, you know, that it was, we heard the voice. Uh -huh. He heard the voice. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was in the car along with other people, and they didn't hear it, but I heard it. Yes. So, he heard it differently than I did. Yeah. Yes. 
I mean, it was straight up. It's time to go. It's like, okay. I want to. I want to say something on what you just said now. Mm -hmm. If God tells you something important, mm -hmm. often He will confirm it through somebody else. Yeah. You said about Colonel Yarin the same thing. Uh huh. Well, she was sitting on the back patio, and she goes, Colonel. Come here, I gotta tell you something. And she goes, when I was putting Papa in the hospital, Bless and I was coming home, God came to me and told me it was time to go. And I go, two days ago, I, I heard the same thing. Um, when Brenda and I got the job opportunity in America, mm -hmm. as I said before, it was like, and if you, well, for those that were in church on Sunday, that was, and for you as well, it was very much a repeat of what we went through um, with the calling, but God confirmed it in so many different ways for mm -hmm. us, and if He didn't, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. We needed that confirmation, we needed to know it was God's will. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a I said before, the young boys came to a girl in the church and said, now God's told me you're going to be my wife. And she said, well, when he tells me that, um, then we can talk again. <laughs> 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 we can't just jump at something. We've got to have the compliment. Yes, yes. I, I remember when, when we were leaving <laughs> Chicago, uh, and I went to a service. That was at the beginning of 05. That was in January, the beginning of 05. So I, was, I went to a service. I uh, got the guy, I forget the minister's name, and he, they was having a prophetic service, and he called me up, uh, and he said that God was going to reposition us. Now, this guy didn't know nothing from Adam, yes. right? And he said God was repositioning us, and he started saying some things. He said, yes, there will be some trials, and every, and they would take, and, and he, now these people didn't know nothing about what we were, had, you know, was planning right. on moving to Arizona. So I, I believe God gave that to them. It yes. was a current word. It was a ready word. It wasn't just scattered. And so it gave, you know, gave us... Um, it, I'm, yeah, it's I'm very sorry. important. Mm -hmm. It's very important to have it. Um, we were in, the, in our church in South Africa. One of our pastors came to the church board. Well, our mm -hmm. pastor met with the church board and he said to us that um, he's been called to another church mm -hmm. in the Nazarene community but you know mm -hmm. and he said um, he's still seeking God's will on the call mm -hmm. but he said he wants us to go away for a week and pray about it the whole board mm -hmm. and to come back and we meet again and talk about it after a week we came back and it was interesting because the whole board said they don't feel that this is God's telling them that you know right. and but then for the first time he brought his wife into the meeting so I said to we said to her, Carol, what do you think about it? She said, a um, month or two ago, she says, God told me he was going to rip me away from the ones I love. Wow. And she was preparing to die. That's the only thing she could understand mm -hmm. from that message, was she's going to die. So she was preparing her family, um, you know, and getting ready. And she even told her husband, if you date so and so after I have gone, I will haunt you. <laughs> oh, no. But that was Carol. <laughs> she was quite a person. But that immediately <coughs> stopped me in my tracks and confirmed that that call was for real. <coughs> that confirmation had been given before the time. That's true. It's, uh, when someone give a word, there's always, just like you say, there's yeah. always a confirmation. Yes. Or God have already talk to you about it. Yes. You're right. That's true. Yes. Confirmation. But you know that God works through marriages too. Yes. That's a, except for a lot of times we're on Muslim, but it doesn't work through marriages. So we hear something and a while later you like a lot of times I think to tell my husband something before I tell him, you know, because it comes in my head and, I, and he comes and tells me the same thing. So mm -hmm. I know that that, yeah. you know, it's not something that would just, I mean, it's not magic, you know. Yes. Yeah, my problem is I forget a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> You're sitting at a table of a lot of people that are forgetting a lot of times. <laughs> so, Mom. 
Let me just find, I'm sorry, I, I turned over by accident and I couldn't find where I was. Yeah. Well, why is the attitude speak for your servant is listening important in order to hear from God? Say that again. Why is the attitude of speak for your servant is listening important in order us, for us to hear from God? Because sometimes we might miss the, you know, God is trying to speak and we can miss it, you know. Yeah, we can, God is sometimes showing us or trying to speak to us and if we're not in tune, we'll miss what he's trying to say. Okay, it's truthy. I'm sorry, go ahead. He said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. He was open and willing. Yes, mm -hmm. No, we're just basically going to say the same thing. We have to acknowledge that we are servants of God. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. How does Samuel's openness to hear from God compare with yours? Are you open today to hear from God? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. It's important. I'll be honest, I am. But sometimes I don't stop long enough to listen, yeah. to wait and listen. Now with me, with my ADD, that's a big problem. <laughs> is stop and listen because yeah. I'm already 10 steps ahead um, yeah. I'm 50 behind <laughs> <laughs> what did Samuel say to what did God say to Samuel verses 11 to 14 then the Lord said to Samuel behold I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle in the day I will perform Eli against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end for I have told him that I will judge his house forever forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he did not restrain them and therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. Wow, that's a strong word. <coughs> there it is. Wow. wow. <coughs> that's a strong word. It is. It is. And for a young way. Oh, and you know the interesting thing is um, the ears will tingle. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. We would probably say uh, you get good flesh. Goose flesh, goose bumps, or your ears start burning. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's a you know that's a great scripture. Mm -hmm. yes. The ears of everyone that hear it should tingle, versus people offing it off, ignoring it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They're not going to be able to ignore it. It's quite mm -hmm. a statement. Yes. And then he said in 13, because Eli didn't restrain his sons. I think he was a little partial, like, you know, not dealing with the sin. Yeah. And because he didn't deal with the sin, the iniquity came on them. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go any farther, yeah. but yeah, sometimes if God warns us uh, of a thing and we don't listen, God will cause uh, things to happen, to, you know, mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate. Yeah, I'm going to stop at that. Yeah. And you know, there's several parts in the Bible that you, you read where the parents are supposed to restrain their children. Mm -hmm. And he, did, he knew that, but he didn't do it. And it's, it's um, he was in a, a place of very high, what's the word I want to use, influence <coughs> on mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. And he because he couldn't control his own family, he could not be used in other people's lives. Mm -hmm. That's so sad. That mm -hmm. is so sad. So how many pastors in different churches fail to restrain their children because they don't want to cause any, uh, what is the word that? Embarrassment. Yeah, embarrassment, embarrassment. or images yeah. to fall out, you know. The same pastor I spoke Someone. about that got to call to another church. He was, he was an interesting man, he is an interesting man, 
He lives in Indiana now, by the way. Nothing so that prepared anymore. But um, he was in the Salvation Army first as an officer before he came over to the church in the Nazarene and became a pastor there. But one of the um, guys that they were working with that had problems and that, you know, in the Salvation Army, took him aside in front of everybody was, and really let him have it. Told him everything he thought was wrong with him. Now, it's interesting how different people react in a situation like that. He sat down and word for word he went through what he said. You might have a point there, I need to look at that. No, I don't agree with you there, I don't have a problem there. And he went through the whole thing with him mm -hmm. and was able to discuss it. But he took it, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and, and he, was, he was willing to do a self... Um, examination. Yes, examination. And say, you know, because sometimes we hear things and say, it's difficult. It, it, it is difficult. Um, I know. I, I have children that are over 50. only have two. And I, sometimes I have a problem with straining them. Yeah. Well, I'm not soft to them, but I know that they're at the point now they should be self-sufficient. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, Why do you think it would have been particularly hard for Samuel to hear this message? He won, yeah. Yes. Yeah, with all, all, with all his short givings and he was still the father figure mm -hmm. and the mother figure to Samuel, because Samuel only saw his mom once a year mm -hmm. when she came for sacrifices. Mm -hmm. That's right. What is the greatest obstacle that prevents you from hearing God's voice? Too much noise. Too much noise? Uh, not walking in the spirit. Yeah, not walking in the spirit. I, I have to be very careful. I, I love social media. But that's because I'm a people person. I, I, get, I like people around me. And so social media, I love it. But I've got to be careful that it... Doesn't overtake you? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have to be... I have to control myself. Yeah. Their opinions can... Yes, I, they, today, today's world lives with so many what they call influencers That's true. On, the, on, the, um, yeah. on social media mm -hmm. where these young kids and they follow these people and they have millions of followers and you know and they influence their lives mm -hmm. and it's not always a good thing, mm -hmm. in fact it's very seldom a good thing. Mm -hmm. We need to... Sorry. No, just a little funny little incident, but still too much noise and clatter and clamor. When we went to Japan, our little granddaughter is now 15, she was just a, a baby in a stroller. Mm -hmm. But, well, she must have been, what, two? She was, yeah, she was two, small three. though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, they went to church, but they had to go, they had to get on a train to get to church. Yeah, we took the Japanese train. Japanese train, and she was in a little stroller, and if you know anything about Japan, that's exactly what their trains are. Bullet train. Always hustle, bustle, it's clutter, full. It's full. There is a people in. Yeah. yeah, and it's a bullet train. <laughs> no, there wasn't. Um, it wasn't a bullet train, but, oh. but yeah. And um, she's sitting there, and eventually she says, too much, Mama, too much. Put a little blanket over her head. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an, a good example of this. Sometimes stuff gets too much. Yes. You have to pull your blanket yes. over yep. and pay attention to so, what's good. I've been on the, I've been on the underground train in, in Tokyo and I've been on it in London. And at the times you are, you can barely breathe. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are crowded. Okay. And life can do that to us if we're not careful. Mm -hmm. That's true. I know when I was mentioning too much noise, we bought a house over there with Pima and we lived across to another house. And they had the high school kids and everybody around us. So it was like constant, constant noise. <coughs> and then we moved to them, we bought another house on Roosevelt. And that was worse because they come with the cars racing. So what happens is when we're in an area like that, our attitude changes. We get annoyed and... Yeah. Sad and all that, so that kind of keeps our spirit down, you know, that we don't have contact with our spirits. Mm -hmm. And so we moved over here when we bought the house. At first I wasn't sure 
But it's so quiet in here. Yes. We can concentrate and we can pray and you can actually hear your own yeah. thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's what Brenda and I love about the way we live in our house because it's so quiet. Mm -hmm. um, it really is, except when our previous neighbours are just sitting in the house now behind us where they had a party every now and then and we'd sing drunken karaoke, but otherwise it was. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing we have that's behind us is a New Year's and Fourth of July. There are fireworks <coughs> yeah. over in the Ariana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Samuel in verse, verses 15 and 17, mm -hmm. Eli was 98 years old, no, I'm on the wrong one, sorry, yeah. was this three? so Samuel lay down until morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord, mm -hmm. and Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, and he answered, Here I am. And he said, What is the word that the Lord has spoken to you? Please do not hide it from me. God do so to you and more if you hide anything from me of all the things that he has said to you. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was tempted not to tell Samuel. Mm. Uh, to Eli, I mean, yes. what the God has said. But it's almost like a threat. It would. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you think about it, uh, a Samuel, threat, maybe a, a little bit of jealousy? Yeah, because basically Samuel knew what the Lord said to Eli, but Eli didn't want to admit it. Well, I think, I think that Eli, amongst all his failures, still had that, um, had that knowing that he was wrong. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a Christian home, mm -hmm. and uh, the Bible says, train a child in a way you should go when he's young and when he's old, you'll not depart from it. Mm -hmm. I believe firmly that he can depart from it for a while, mm -hmm. but God will bring him back to it, That's because true. that word is planted in his heart. When I was 16, I started working full-time, and I was earning too much money with very little sense, and uh, mm -hmm. never had a father figure in my life. My dad died when I was 13. Yeah. And I went off the rail, alcohol and everything, for, for three years, 16 to 19. My mom just never stopped praying for me during that time. Mm -hmm. And at 19, I went to church the one Sunday night, because I used to go to church once a, a, a Sunday, just to keep my mom happy so that <laughs> there would be peace in the house. It was the only reason I went. But it was one of those services I got saved. <laughs> so... It's important, and, and, but the thing is, um, I've lost my train of thought. It's it's tempting. I never, I always knew the whole time in those three years that if God came today, I would not be going. Even though I was not, I had not committed my life to Him. I had the teaching there, mm -hmm. and I knew if the rapture came, I was behind. There was no doubt about it. And so there was, it, it was still there in the back of my mind, yeah. although I was fighting it. Mm -hmm. And when we are tempted to hide God's word from others, we have a, 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 a conviction. Mm -hmm. There's a good word for that. Um, I, rem I remember, sorry, I remember traveling one day to a, a, a training course for first aid. We were teachers and... There was a girl that worked with me, and, uh, she traveled with me, and she asked me about something, why I do it. I said, oh, it's a conviction. Oh, you're a Christian. You know? Mm -hmm. Conviction is an important word. It is. Yep. It, yes. God convicts. That's true. You, it's hard, you can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. You can fight it, but that conviction will, will remain there. Mm -hmm. And if you try and hide that word from others, God's going to convict you. How does God, Samuel's obedience affect his relationship to God and his future ministry? 19 to 21, listen to this. So Samuel grew and the Lord was with him mm -hmm. and let none of his words fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord. 
-hmm. Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's very really good. He, because he was obedient, yes. and we can't, and, and, and it's right in a certain way to convict, uh, to, to criticize Eli there, mm -hmm. but Eli did it. The main thing for Samuel there, he forced Samuel to come out with what God had told him. Mm -hmm. Don't hide it. Yeah, yeah well maybe uh, Eli was um, like you were when you were 17 and 18, knowing, oh, I'm not, I haven't done everything right here. Mm -hmm. What's the Lord saying about it? Yes. He, he was still convicted. I think, you know, even people that go to their graves, um, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, some people say, oh, you know, I'm, it's a decision of faith that mm -hmm. they don't believe in God. And you, you have mm -hmm. to think about it. It's, they have faith in that. Um, because they don't have proof that there's no God mm -hmm. <laughs> any more than we have absolute proof that there is one. Without faith, it is impossible to believe God. Now, Correct. he came down to every human being and looked them in the eye and physically came down and shook them around a little bit, mm -hmm. and you knew it was God. Well, that, that wouldn't require much faith. Yeah. But people that deny the existence of God or come to that conclusion, that's a conclusion, they have faith in that. They don't have any proof. It's scientifically possible that mm -hmm. there is a creator and yes. a wise eternal being. Yes. That's scientifically possible. The same way uh, an inventor can invent the light bulb and he knows how to turn it off and on. God knows how to turn our cells off and on. The reason we die is God turns the cell off because he can't trust us with eternal life right yet. Or we'd be Adolf Hitler's killing everybody or the ah. those of us that are self centered Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so that's one. So that that aspect of you know, in the back of your head, I'm not living right. And I remember yes. that feeling too when I was young and was searching. And I had heard all the scriptures sitting in church because I mm -hmm. not only was it my family, but I ended up agreeing to go to church with the neighbors and sitting mm -hmm. there listening. And I'm sitting there listening. Well, that does make logical sense, but I, and one of the other neighbor's girl comes over and says, Well, Troy, are you a Christian? And I had to look her right in the eye and go, No, I'm not. <laughs> and it's just, and I was like, and I went, turned around and walked slowly back to the house like, Yeah, boy, she sure laid that on the line. <laughs> At age, what, 13 or something, you know, 14, 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then that's that, that decision. So I've looked at people like that say, oh, you know, I just don't believe in God. Well, you have faith in that, and, and they go to that way. But I think for a lot of people, there's that gnawing doubt in the back of your head about, well, you know, what if there is one? <laughs> what if I am doing wrong? And you know, it does say that we have a, um, our, it's written in our heart conscience. And the funny thing about that is people that are self-centered murderers, they sometimes actually have a conscience, but they justify it by saying, well, I did the right thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. Not for the guy I murdered, but yeah. for me. Or they'll <laughs> or say, buddies. the devil, the devil told me to yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> they'll listen to him. We live, we live yeah. in a era so, where it's so easy to blame on this. Well, well, that's where Eli was, yes. bringing it, wrapping it around to the topic at hand. Um, you know, that's Eli there. That's oh, why he said, tell me the truth, please. Uh, <laughs> but in that verse you just read in 19, it mm -hmm. says, Samuel grew, uh, Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and he, and he did not let none of his words fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. I believe in his growing, there was, there was obedience. Yes. You know, it, even as a child and as he began to grow, I think that was talking about years. And the Bible said that God didn't let none of his words fall to the ground. Uh, so, and God established him, you know. So I believe that, that he was committed, yes. you know, yeah. and he was chosen. He was set aside. Yes. So. Um, first of all, I want to say that despite Eli's shortfall, mm -hmm. he did some good. Mm -hmm. In Samuel's upbringing. Mm -hmm. 
he had an, he did have an influence on Samuel. Yeah, he did. That's true. Yeah. Secondly, earlier you mentioned predestined predestination. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, between the different churches, there's there's a thing that said you're either predestined to be a Christian or you're not. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people will be saved, some won't be saved. Mm -hmm. And it, it, they, it, they almost make it sound as if God decides who's going to be a Christian and who's not. I don't believe that's the case. And Brenda will, could, could, you can talk to Brenda if you want to talk more. She's done a lot of study on this and it's okay. been interesting. Okay. But we believe in predestination in that God knows what's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So he can see your life to the end and he knows you didn't get saved. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Then you're predestined not to be saved. Yeah. Because of your actions. Yeah. And God knows it's gonna happen. That's but true. that means he didn't that doesn't mean that God didn't give you every opportunity possible for that's you to be saved. True. I agree. Yeah. That's I right. have to interrupt because of the fact that we talk about parents and we talk about Christianity and you know doctrine and all that. And let's say for instance, I was put in a Catholic school when I was very young. Yes. I had my parents, I had my grandparents, and my grandma was the only one that, you know, made sure I was okay and stuff like that. But I was raised in what you call the Christian environment, yes. according to the Catholic Church. Yes. Because they are Christians according to them. So it's not so much the parents or what is, what gets program into us as we're growing up. Like when I was in the Christian school, we weren't allowed to go out in public unless we were to help someone, do something for someone else. So a lot of times the doctrine itself that we listen to kind of gets in our way as far as thinking and thinking about how God is and what mm -hmm. God does for us. Mm -hmm. I, I have thought about that a lot. What about a child that grows up in a cult, not a Mormon church or, or, or <coughs> you know, something like that, mm -hmm. and that's all they know. Mm -hmm. And they come before God one day, what? What are you going to say to them? The Bible says God will judge you according to the light you've received. Yep. Uh -huh. But, but uh, God won't be just. If, the Bible said that the, the Word of God will get out into all men. That means no one here, no one anywhere can stand before God and say, I didn't know. Because yeah. God is going to make an opportunity somewhere. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to talk about Jesus. They'll just say, Jesus saved. That, that's, a, that's all yes. you need to know in the Bible. Yeah. So I believe that all of us, all mankind, is going to get a chance, whether they yeah. uh, raised in a cult, whatever. You know, um, I, I met some um, Seven Day Adventist uh, guys, and I said they was they was witness they were trying to witness to me. I said I'm probably not a good recruit for you guys because they were. <laughs> <laughs> They was trying to tell me about Joseph Smith. Uh, well, okay, so I'm saying. Wait, not seventh day Adventist. You mean Latter Day Saints or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and they kept on talking to me. They were really kind and all of that. And I said, do you guys want to hear? You know, and it was kind of funny. I said, I'm not, I'm not the one you recruit because I love Jesus and I'm going to serve him. I, I didn't know. I didn't sound arrogant, but it was like they was, you know, like trying to tell me. Okay, I don't so, know. No, I, I agree about that, you know, that God, and it says according to the light they've received. So some yes. people will receive more word than others. Yes. According to what they do with the word they've received is what yes. they will be judged on. Yes. Not how much they That's they, true. They You're right. You're so right. I was on a project in Salt Lake City for two days, and uh, I had to go and work at a company there, help them with something on their computer security mm -hmm. and I finished like half a day earlier almost a whole day earlier than I needed to mm -hmm. and I had a whole afternoon ahead of me before my flight left to go back to California I thought now what do I do and I thought I'm going to go and see the Mormon temple in Salt Lake City mm -hmm. I mean, it's massive that's the big one mm -hmm. yeah. so I went to Temple Square and walked around. You can't go into the temple because you're not a Mormon, but they have a visitor section and so forth. But a young mission, Mormon missionary girl, that means she's still doing her mission, the two year mission, and, um, but she came and talked to me. And I had, I had read the Book of Mormon mm -hmm. purely out of interest to know what they say 
and what I say. You know, and there was a time in my life I went a lot with the cults. What do they believe? What do we believe? Yeah. And I think it's good. Uh -huh. It's good to have it. But I spoke to about Joseph Smith and his and the Angel Maroni and these magic glasses and you know all that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. She said to me, um, "If you're not a Mormon, how come you know so much about this?" And I said to her, "I." believe you can't say somebody else, you don't agree with somebody else, or you, you what, what they're doing is wrong, if you don't know what they believe. That's the truth, that's yep. true. Yeah. So, I said that was a bit, the same time I'm saying to her, I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. you can't say I'm wrong without knowing what I believe. Yeah. So, and I hope that that got through to her, mm -hmm. you know, that's where it ended. Uh, a week later I was back home in California and I get a knock on our door and it's two young Mormon missionaries. They mm -hmm. got my name of course from the visit to the temple. But they came there and this is where you can argue. Mm -hmm. or you can, I said to them, guys, it's hot, I'm tired <laughs> and I'm really not into getting into a discussion now. Yeah. And I said, and, and they left it and as they were leaving, I was convicted because it was so hot as I called them back and said, do you want some cold water? <laughs> and I gave them cold water. I think God will bless more of that cold water that went to them than anything else and any discouraging word or trying to prove them wrong. Sometimes to prove somebody wrong doesn't help. No. Um, no. You need oh, to that's... love them. And that's supposed to prove anybody wrong. You need okay. to love them. Yeah. When we lived in Desert Center and he was just so... He was four when we moved there, <coughs> and so had been there like 49 years. But when we were, uh, when we decided, uh, he was, you were, I don't know, <laughs> he, we had Mormons, and he was, what, the minister of the Mormon church, uh -huh. and all their kids, and all that kind of stuff. They lived right across the street from us, mm -hmm. and, uh, we grew, you know, the kids played together, we had different beliefs, uh -huh. and I talked to his wife several times and stuff, we shared recipes and that kind of stuff, but uh, I think the part that got to me is we didn't really talk about our differences, but after their kids grew up, I got them on my doorstep, and they thanked us for the way we lived, yeah. that it showed them a different yes. way. Yes. Yeah. So that's, you know, yes. it goes back to that thing about they may not read the Bible, but they're going to read you. Uh -huh. yes. yes, and I hope those two young missionary guys that came to my door will not remember that I didn't talk to them about it, mm -hmm. but that I showed love to them and gave them cold water in the heat. Mm -hmm. And it's important. Mm -hmm. um, well, when you were honest, you also said you just didn't have any energy, so yes. you weren't being rude about it. Yes. If you're respectful to the other view, mm -hmm. you can only prove one conclusion by examining the opposite conclusion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You yes. know, so, yes. it's, it's yeah. Circle K to the left or the right. It was one or the other. So yeah. you got to examine both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the, the mystery of God is that we have this free will to ignore him or to start paying attention and seek him out. Just one more I want to share. Brendan and I used to, on a Friday night in South Africa, we used to have an open house and our friends all would come and we'd play games. You know? it, was, it was great, you know, but Friday is a fellowship night. And some were Christians, some were, you know, that's fine. Uh, and one night as we were having this, there was a knock on my door, and this was during apartheid still, and it was a young black man. And uh, he said, I'm the, from the church of, I forget what he called it, he gave it some fancy names. Um, he said, I said to him, you know, we've got guests here, and I said, I'd love to talk to you, but I just, think. but when he said, I'm from the church of the unification, I think it is. And I said to him, what are you better known as? And he said, the Moonies. The Moonies? Yeah. Right, yeah, the Moonies. Then I said to him, Reverend Moon. Yeah, then I said to him, okay, here's the thing. I said, I don't agree with what you guys are teaching. Nope. 
I said, and I'd love to talk to you, but I've got guests inside, and I really can't do it. He's, so, of course, apartheid South Africa, he used to race God. He said to me, it's because you're white and I'm black mm -hmm. that you don't want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. and, well, and God just led me to go to him, put my arms around him and hug him. I said, mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. I said, but I can't talk to you tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's important that we get that message through. That's true. Mm -hmm. We love that. Because mm -hmm. that's what they remember. That's true. Samuel loved Eli and his, uh, even despite the problems in the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What practical steps, and this is our last note for tonight, what practical steps mm -hmm. can you take to be more attentive to God's voice? Take time to pray yeah. in a quiet place and by yourself and take time to listen. Yes. Don't just rattle. Uh -uh. Don't, then, you, then you can't hear him. Don't rush your devotion. Mm -hmm. yep. And don't let it just become a, a pattern. A yeah. pattern and a, saying the same prayer over and over. Let it be something deep between exactly. you and God. Mm -hmm. Have any of you seen the movie The War Room? Mm -hmm. Yes. We have. We have that. That was deep. Yeah, it was. I, you know, I didn't know it when I was a little girl. And I didn't know it. <laughs> that I was raised by this lady that was, she was half Korean, half Japanese. And I stayed at her house and she's kind of like a nanny to me. And she protected me from my stepfather when he would beat me and stuff and I'd hide out at her house. Okay, anyway, uh, when we had to, when I had to go back and be with my stepfather and my mom, I had this little place in my closet, and it was my hiding place, but I didn't know that was my war room, yes. because I was yes. too little, because I, yes. I had it when I was four or five years old, but it was still my little hiding place. I had a blanket in there, it was a place I could be alone and I felt safe because yes. I'd already learned how to pray mm -hmm. yes. and that was from that lady wonderful. not from somebody else wonderful yes Thank you, Jesus. Now, I was going to say uh, I hear a lot of people talking about prayer closets and stuff like that but in my case it's dream so when I wake up I have to stop before I do anything else because otherwise I don't remember my dreams yeah and it's usually about something or someone that needs help or prayer or anything like that, but I don't, that's how God talks to me in my prayers. Yeah, sometimes he'll say, you have to do something today. Or he'll, so what, me. or he'll show you the pictures of where you have to go or who you have to talk to that day. Mm -hmm. It took me a long time to realize the voice, because the voice always sounds different. Until I realize that you have to be him. Yes. Him. Once you've heard God's voice, and once he's confirmed in your life his mm -hmm. calling, mm -hmm. there can be no doubts going That's forward. so true. Yep. And when Brenda and I came to America, mm -hmm. it was tough. You talk about culture shock. We came from a big country, big city, freeways, malls, everything that you would think, mm -hmm. except we drove on the right hand side. We drove on the left hand side of the road. We drove on the right side of the road. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there was a time shortly after we came here, we were under a lot of pressure in corporate America, especially me as a breadwinner, that Brenda and I were both very despondent. And it was at that stage, although we'd burnt our bridges coming across, it was easier probably to just say, let's and go back and we might have thought that if we didn't know for sure it was God's will that we would be uh, mm -hmm. wow. that kept us grounded and, and looking forward <coughs> and one more thing about the passage that we read so the chapter starts off with um, like we said in those days the word of the Lord was read yes. and it ends and Samuel's word came to all Israel. Wonderful. So it changes Very from good, yeah. the one hearing it to everyone hearing yes. mm -hmm. Very good. So it, Hannah's prayer changed it from changed from those days God's word was rare mm -hmm. 
to Samuel was heard by all the people. By her obedience to God and saying, I'll give him to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's true. This was good. It was. Next week we're going to start a study on Jonah. Mm -hmm. um, if you can get to church, it would be a good um, to get you into it. If you can't get to church, um, a man with the camera at the end there, um, as well as we've got two cameras that run during service. One gives the service as it takes place. The other one is a podcast on YouTube which will show you the service afterwards but can prepare you before the Wednesday night. And I have, I have taught studies before where we have taught what the pastor is preaching on and it's actually great because you go into more depth of what he spoke about and yes. talked about it. And it so. Any prayer requests? No, we already pray for Cam. Yes, they are in a good time by the sounds of it. They are. So are they up there in Oregon? Yeah. Yes, they're up that way. Yeah. Oh, that's my mom there first. Last I heard from them, yes. they were in Utah. Yeah, yeah. I just keep, keep getting yes. better. Yes. And mm -hmm. pray for every. Can pray for Robin. This is. Yes. Keep her in prayer that yeah. she keeps getting better. Because uh -huh. I can yeah. see a big difference in you. And I'm really. Well, bless your heart. Thank you very much. <laughs> you don't know how many times I prayed, and because I, I didn't hear anything, and I just yeah. thought, "Oh, did she make it through? How is it?" And, you know, I, so I just I, kept going. Well, you I have been around. Yourself, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Carry on. No, no okay. carry on, please. <laughs> no, thank you. I, you were laid up yourself. I'm glad you're up and around, Jackie. I'm so sorry because I kept threatening to cook you a casserole and find it over to your house. And then I just couldn't. I just, uh, <laughs> hey, I didn't. I have, survived I, with. The, I didn't have the strength. Other lady, you know, was, other ladies in the church have brought me sandwich stuff. I've gotten, I got salad stuff. I got fruit. I got, uh, I got cookies and <laughs> yeah, no cards. And, oh, thank you for the card. Yeah. Yes. Think of it. And uh, just. Just knowing that people were there thinking about you and praying for you really helps, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Let's pray for everybody at this represented at this table today. We all got our problems. Mm -hmm. We're all getting older. We all got our aches and pains. <laughs> yes, and, so true. Um, but God is in control. Don't forget the pastor. Don't forget the pastor. Has he? Is he back yet? He's back. He's, he's well, just that, arrived. Well, we can be thankful that he had safe travels. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a tough time for him to go and say goodbye to his <laughs> dad with the funeral and so but I I'm interested in talking to him because some of his siblings are not Christians and, and, and <laughs> what do they like to hear about. Mm -hmm. Um who's gonna close for us? I'll close. Okay, God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word, God. Uh, we thank you for Eli and Samuel, Lord God, and even as you speak to us. Give us ears to hear in Jesus' name. As we leave this place, don't let your word leave us in Jesus' name. Help us to meditate in it day and night. You yes. said, then we'll make our way prosperous. Yes. You said, then we'll have good success. I pray for everyone that's here, every single person that's in this setting. Touch our minds, our bodies, our souls, and our spirits. In Jesus' name, our endeavors. In Jesus' name. God, we thank you because you alone are faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Remember to pray for Chris as well when you do. Uh, you know, Chris, and he comes, he comes now and then. He's now a chaplain at the, uh, at the prison in, in, in Florence. So he comes really now, but he does when he gets a chance. But pray for him in his ministry. I, I got a question. How I, I want to know. Um, maybe you can tell me the protocol to get into the prisons. What is it? What What does it take? Because I was thinking about uh, uh, the women's group taking up some of us to. The you worked. At, well, Chris might be the right person to talk to. Okay. Do you Do you have this? Yes. Okay. I'll have to get it down yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. Better not have a record. 
<laughs> but but as, as a chaplain, you know, he'll probably be the best person to get that information for you. Okay, thank you so <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you for the attending the study tonight. And we pray you have a good week. And get yourself and your hearts prepared for next week as we start our study on Jonah. Yeah. yeah. See you next week. Well, I forgot to mention Choice Dad's.